I want to move into uh, a tool that we call Snap Drive for Windows, which is um, a, a NetApp plug-in for uh, Windows 2000 and above systems. Um, it's an MMC Snap, and so as you can see here, I'm opening up Server Manager, um, and I'm expanding the Storage tab. And as you'll see here, right below Storage is an icon that says Snap Drive. You'd initiate. You know, Snap Drive has two features. It has um, actual tie, tie in back into a registered storage controller, um, which will actually show you file view if you have to actually get into the system and manage it. This is not a, a requirement. The storage admins can actually um, um, prevent the, the Windows admins from, from um, communicating back into their system. But this tool is once granted permission by the storage team, allows a, a Windows team to actually manage the storage for their specific host itself. And so what I will show you here is at present time, we don't have any <clears throat> LUNs connected from the NetApp storage rate to the system. And in fact, we're going to do this over iSCSI. We don't even have iSCSI's targets defined on the system. And so to validate what I'm sharing with you, I'm going to open up um, Explore here so that you can see that the system basically has uh, two local disks, a C drive and an E drive. And now we will go ahead and provision storage. Um, and it, the, the provisioning will be reflected both in um, the Explorer window, but also into Systems Manager. So uh, to start, the first thing we need to do is to establish a session with our storage. So uh, we, we launched the iSCSI session wizard. And this allows us to um, select the storage controller that we're going to communicate iSCSI with. And as you can see, what gets returned back is the available ports that we can communicate um, via iSCSI. Now, a storage administrator does have the means to restrict which ports um, a user could connect to uh, this system via iSCSI with. Um, for our example here, wide open, so you are seeing this list of, of um, IP addresses that are available to this system. And so we'll take, it, it auto selects um, networks that are um, on the same subnet as one another so that we can avoid routing. Um, it does that by default. So we will select that means. And as you can see now, we've established a nice because target um, or a means to communicate between the storage and the host itself. Going back to the disks menu, I can simply right click on, click on the disk and say create a disk. And again, I launch as launches a create disk wizard and it allows me to what the storage controllers that I'm configured for. And from here, it, I get a list of, of um, volumes on the array. And if you recall, I said you have to have a flexible volume in order to um, create a LUN. I'm just going to select um, this volume here, and I'm going to pick, pick a path and create a LUN. And I can uh, actually give it a description if I need to. Um, so that the storage admin has a little bit of understanding of what, what the use for that LUN is. Uh, this tool works with, with both dedicated systems as well as uh, Microsoft cluster servers. So uh, it, it works very well if it's in a position of um, needing to connect a LUN to uh, multiple nodes in a, in a cluster. So we support drive letters or, and or mounting as volume mount points. We'll just take the, de the default here, this, this F drive. Um, it's asking me if I want to limit the size of my, my um, storage options. I'm going to choose it help to, to not limit it. Um, oops, I could have picked a larger volume here. And I'm going to make a, a one gig disk just for uh, example's sake. I verify the initiator I want to use. Um, it, this, the, the tool asks us um, if it wants to allow us to manually configure some of the initiator group or do it automatically. We're going to let it go automatically, and it's going to go off. And not only will it provision the disk for us, it's actually going to connect it to the system or all the systems if we were doing it in a cluster, and it will actually format the disk. I don't know if you see here in the Explorer window, but the F drive already popped up with its label demo for WebEx. So from those that are on the call so far, this is still running. You can see a little hourglass here in the snap drive. But um, does this tool appear significantly different than, than maybe the, the demonstration you had last week? Bueller? hoping somebody would chime in there. As soon as this is um, done with its final steps, um, I'm actually going to take a, 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 a peek inside a systems manager, show you that the LUN is uh, in systems manager as well. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and clone the LUN, or take a snapshot of the LUN, and actually then connect to the snapshot version of the LUN. 
Um, and again, I can do it all from the Windows host itself, seeing that it is, uh, that LUN is associated with this host, the, the Windows host or Windows administrator has the rights to manipulate that object as they need to. Huh, why are we taking so long? I love live demos. Okay, well, I'll wait for that. I'm going to show you Systems Manager. I'm going to refresh our LUN list. Here at the top of our list, demo LUN. Show you this online. Shows you what initiator it's, it's mounted to. That's the actual address of the physical Windows host. And I see the, the, that drive window just refreshed, which means we're all done. So this is letting you know that our LUN is up online. Um, how the partition is formatted with the GPT partition, and that it's dedicated to this host. Okay. I can also expand on this and show you whether there's any snapshots associated with this one. And they'll report out here. As you can see, there are no snapshots. And so I can literally right-click and say, take a snapshot. And I'll create one called Demo Snap. And literally that quick, I have a snapshot copy uh, listed of that machine. And just as easily, if I had a history of snapshot backups and someone needed to access a data set from a previous point in time, they can select uh, any of these snapshots and literally uh, right-click on it and say connect to disk. And just as simple as we provision this disk, connect it right back into our storage controller um, as another, another drive letter or as a volume mount point. And the process, the process just repeats itself, the same process that we had when we, we provisioned and connected that one. Any, any questions so far about storage provisioning and management inside of a Windows host? Oh, Calvin, welcome. I, I see that you've joined. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah, happy to. Had a, had a little bit of a trouble getting into the WebEx, but I got in. No problem. I, I don't think you were alone in that. Uh, hey, Vaughn, so one, a couple, co couple quick comments, and I'm not a technical expert to go too deep here, but this is obviously different than what we use because we used um, FileRview, which, correct me if I'm wrong, it's still a supported tool, right? Still ships with a fast. Yep. Um, the other thing I'm, I'm curious to see is um, how do you guys create a writable snapshot? Oh, that snapshot I connected to is writable. Okay, it is. I'll, I'll demonstrate for you. That's a really good point. Um, well, actually, you can see in the little icon here that, that uh, if you squint your eyes, you can see that's a little pencil sitting above uh, drive letter G. And if I go to G, so I now have my, my directory. So the... the I mentioned earlier on that, that once we have taken the the disks and we've um, RAID protected them, that's a construct that we call an aggregate, that the level above that is uh, flexible volumes, and that we really really move into a realm that, that's object-oriented storage. And so um, how this writable snapshot is um, available is that we, we actually reserve, um, well, depending on thick or thick provisioning, we either reserve... Um, blocks or uh, we account for blocks that are going to make up a LUN, but if you want to reference to a snapshot of it, then we basically lock a, a history of what the, the, the blocks are and the pointer tables for the blocks for any given time. And then to take that snapshot and clone it, we're basically pointing to the snapshot blocks and now we're just going to just manage in 4K blocks of uniqueness for the clone that you created. So so uh, while there was no data on this 